Inside every eukaryotic cell's nucleus, genetic code is stored containing vital instructions for the creation of proteins, which perform a vast array of important functions within the body. Endomembrane trafficking allows and enables that transfer of information and eventual formation to occur. Protein synthesis is the process through which a cell generates new proteins. Proteins are produced using information provided by the DNA found in the nucleus. The nucleus functions as the cell's control center. It is enclosed by the nuclear envelope. Materials exit into the cytoplasm through nuclear pores. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, is contained within the nucleus and stores genetic code within chromosomes. A molecule of DNA is formed from two DNA strands and paired together by hydrogen bonding between complementary nitrogenous bases. These bases are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. mRNA, messenger ribonucleic acid, carries information from DNA outside the nucleus to continue the process of protein synthesis. RNA replaces the thymine base with uracil. mRNA is formed through the transcription of DNA. Transcription takes place in the nucleoplasm. This process allows instructions for protein formation to be copied from DNA into mRNA. First, the DNA molecule is broken apart by RNA polymerase. As the template strand is zipped away, RNA nucleotides find complementary bases on the coding DNA strand. Each DNA triplet corresponds to a sequence of three nucleotides of mRNA, called a codon. After a complete mRNA strand is assembled, it detaches and exits through a nuclear pore into the cytoplasm where translation will occur. Ribosomes build polypeptides, the precursors to proteins, during protein synthesis. A large ribosomal subunit and a small ribosomal subunit must join together with the strand of mRNA in order for translation to take place. Transfer, or tRNA, carries an amino acid, the structural unit of proteins, to the mRNA. On the opposite end of the tRNA is a sequence of three nitrogenous bases, an anticodon, that pairs with the mRNA codon. The ribosome reads code from the mRNA and assembles the amino acids into a polypeptide chain. Post-translational modification involves the editing of the polypeptide chains. This processing involves actions from the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus, which ensure that a final protein is produced from the polypeptide chain. The unnecessary code is cleaned up by a lysosome while the proteins may be carried outside of the cell in a secretory vesicle through exocytosis. Free ribosomes are scattered throughout the cytoplasm, while fixed ribosomes are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Proteins manufactured here enter the endoplasmic reticulum to be modified and packaged for secretion. The endoplasmic reticulum chemically modifies and ships newly synthesized proteins to the Golgi apparatus with the help of transport vesicles. The Golgi apparatus consists of several flattened membranous discs. The chambers within are called cisternae, similar to those within the endoplasmic reticulum. Vesicles from the endoplasmic reticulum carrying proteins initially arrive at the cis, or the forming face, of the Golgi apparatus, where they are taken in for modification by enzymes. The product exits from the trans, or the maturing face, which is most superficial to the cell's plasma membrane. Secretory vesicles and lysosomes contribute to the trans phase. Secretory vesicles contain secretions that will be discharged from the cell through exocytosis. Lysosomes contain digestive enzymes and are responsible for cleaning up damaged parts of the cell and secreting the waste products. During exocytosis, the vesicle travels through the cytoplasm, fuses to the plasma membrane, and ejects its contents into the extracellular environment. The plasma membrane acts as a semi-permeable barrier between the cell and the extracellular environment. Thanks to this demonstration, we can see how the membrane flow of these organelles enable proteins to be manufactured and utilized in the body.